Growing up in Miami, it was a rough start. We were living in a horrible area. The town was called Little Haiti. Almost 80, 90% of the population in that area were Haitians. But you know what, I had a mom who was very supportive. I had a sister who became second mom to us because mom and dad split up. Our mom was amazing. She's been our inspiration raising eight kids all by herself and so working two jobs all the time I have to kind of step in and help with the younger ones. To get her to the point where she was it took so much hard work because we lived in a place where people don't really believe in kids like us having opportunities. So I was always focusing on where lies a light. How am I going to get out of this environment and make something of myself? At the age of 13, I hear this announcement, anyone interested in girls basketball, come out and try out. And it dawned on me that, wow, I should go do that. Coach Burke instilled fundamentals in us, um, not just myself, but all the other Haitian girls, and we became a powerhouse. The gym would be sold out. You would have a section that's literally, I know it's illegal, but betting on Marie. And it was just always so amazing to see how skillful she was at the game and how focused she was and when she's on that court. It's a different person. It just became something where I said to myself, oh my gosh, I'm going to use sport as a vehicle to capitalize off a scholarship. And that just opened everything up for me. What we loved about Marie, besides her athleticism, was she had a really strong desire to learn the game. And we knew once her basketball IQ caught up with her athleticism that she was going to be really special. One of the most explosive open court players in the country and the best two guard in the women's game. She was remarkable with a ball in her hand. Her crossover. Young people are going to know about Iverson. Well, you should have saw Ferdinand. The baseball players um, who didn't spend a lot of time watching any sports for that matter. She was someone with, with her style of play being an exciting player that guys would go watch and take notice of. Marie Ferdinand has come to play. Her senior year, she carried us to an Elite Eight, and uh, we lost a, a very competitive game to uh, the number one team in the country, which was UConn. And that's the furthest we had been here in a very, very long time. And two years after Marie uh, left, we, we, we made it to our first ever Final Four, and I don't think we'd do that if Marie hadn't took us as, as far as she did. And her success also allowed us to raise our level of recruiting. Uh, for us to develop a player like Marie, for her to have the success that she did, uh, they go into the WNBA and be successful, that was something we sold. Crossover dribble, drives inside, beat everybody to the basket. Coach Starkey was a game changer for my career, and he just made me more of a student of the game. And he also just taught me about how do you be effective on the court? How can you literally move and, and the importance of spacing and how to move without the ball. All the things that I never knew, it was never a part of my game, but he opened up my mind to where scoring became even more easy. Jennifer gets it over to Marie Ferdinand. Ferdinand down low, got away from Black, running layup is good. I was teamed up with Jennifer AZ, who by far, till this day, I call her my all-time favorite point guard. She took me under her wings and showed me and taught me everything and just was there for me as this young rookie. The next evolution for her was the three-point line because in college she could score at will because of her athleticism. She just explodes through the lane. I said, hey Marie, you know, stay after practice with me and let's shoot. And she's like, why? And I said, well, because if you can shoot the three, your super athleticism is going to like be off the charts. Two on the shot clock. That is just a gut shot. And Utah, we were competing with Cheryl Swoops in Houston and one year even knocked them out. Ferdinand with a big time drive. And I was able to make an immediate impact on the team surrounded by great veterans, not only Jennifer, but Adrian Goodson and Natalie Williams. How about Natalie Williams on that play? People that came across her path that were older, that had been successful, she would say like, hey, you know, what do you, what do, you do? Because I want to be the best. Ferdinand. It was incredible then to see Marie go on and be on multiple all-star teams and have an incredible impact on the league. Here come the Silver Stars, Marie Ferdinand Harris with a nice slash to the league. It was big because people in our community don't ever make it that far, right? So young girls started dreaming big now. They started feeling confident saying, well, if Marie can, we can. That is why 
she will be one of the best to ever play in the WNBA. I always knew that she wanted to be a mother. Um, the timing of the WNBA sometimes makes it a little more difficult to try to balance a career and a parent, um, at least starting a family for that matter. Williams, no call with a huge height advantage, and Ferdinand answers with a three. When I found out I was expecting, it was the most scariest time ever, when it's supposed to be the most exciting time. I automatically felt a guilt like I let the fans down, I let my team down, I let my coaches down. I think if you're going to be a basketball coach, you have to understand the landscape of life. And the landscape of life for women is motherhood at times. In my life, being called dad is even more important than being called coach. And I think being a mother is an even higher calling. He was more excited than I was. He was like, wow, Marie, this is great. What can the stars do? to make this just the most exciting time for you. And this was her chance to uh, add to the legacy of the family by having CJ. And it's hard to put into words how excited she was. And uh, you just, you knew she was gonna be a great mother. We were just happy to just be parents, you know, and, and that we had this little life that we were responsible for. And at the time, we were just really trying to share our love with them together. You knew uh, that genetically he was going to be a great athlete, but what he also got for them was their work ethic, uh, their focus, their concentration, uh, their appreciation for fundamentals. I always tell a lot of people I've played 12 years, but my greatest years came when I was on the bench because that was the moment I learned how to serve others. When you watch an athlete go from being a top pick, a franchise player, and then having to be asked to do a different role, when you see that player um, humble themselves and, and, and do what's best for the team, you gain a greater, greater level of respect for them. So just having that experience made me want to instill that in CJ. Well, CJ was the kind of kid that had exceptional talent that was still raw to a degree. So the biggest thing for me was, I just as a father wanted to, you know, just teach him how to compete hard and outwork people. CJ was the kid that you could rely on for anything. To talk to, to, I needed a coach, or I need, a, I need somebody to come help me with something, CJ was the guy. And he projected that on his friends to where his friends became those people. As an athlete, CJ was like inspirational, courageous. He was happy to go to practice. He was happy to come to school. He was happy to see all his friends. Best player on the team to me. He always was willing to help everybody, get everybody to become better. He always put everybody first. He was that kid that was great at everything, but his greatest strength was his ability to interact and connect with people that, you know, would be marginalized. CJ was the kind of kid who would, would walk into uh, a room, whether it's a school cafeteria or whatever, and he would find the kid that's sitting by himself. This kid was a light, a light in a dark world. You know, he was that star player, but yet he wanted no part of the star treatment, but cared for the players who were on the bench. He never bragged about his ability or what he was going to do and where he was going to go. That kind of leader, that's very, very difficult to find. Heartbreaking development and a story we have been following. The Arkla, Texas supporting a new movement to shine light on the student athlete who passed away following an ATV accident over spring break. We spent days um, with him at the hospital um, and, 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 you know, was able to talk to him and, um, and, 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 you know, talk to him and just tell him how much we cared about him. Um, and loved him and that, you know, and just trying to just be there for, and, and support him um, as best as best, best you can in a situation like that. It's just amazing to me because I always believe CJ, he's just been in the business of saving lives, you know, because even in that hospital, he saved three lives because we donated all his organs. Sometimes our actions speak volumes and Marie is one of those. She took a very tragic situation with CJ and she turned it into good for other people. CJ's parents, Marie Ferdinand Harris and Cedric Harris Sr. turned their grief into a movement and created the Be Like CJ Foundation. Well, we wanted to get busy with 
the things that matter to CJ. Be humble, be respectful, you know, do for others. Treat kids who are different, treat them with kindness. Don't make fun of people. And that is what we started to do. And, and it has been huge because all the kids want to be like CJ. I can't wait to see what our future holds. Let's always remember to be like CJ. Thank you. Hey, what's up? Most adults will tell you that middle school, those couple of years are the hardest years, sometimes the worst years in someone's life. Right now, schools, they are in need of positive messages. These kind of speaking opportunities make me excited because I get to share with y'all what makes CJ so special. When you're able to show a kid a certain way to do something, it sticks longer than just telling them about it. And being able to show people CJ and they be able to reflect on it and some have brothers, some have sisters, some have parents that have interacted with CJ. And to be able to show that and to be examples ourselves, maybe we can change two or three, four or five. That's better than zero. Why is it hard for you to be kind to someone? You see the kids that talked about you just quiet, just sitting there, like they've been affected by what they did to you. It actually touched them as much as it touched you. And if CJ can occupy that space by having his curriculum, his kindness curriculum, his inclusiveness curriculum, I think we're happy. If we can host these bereaved retreats and we're giving these families hope, if we can continue with these school tours and pouring into young people on the importance of being humble, being respectful, being kind. And had he stayed here with us and gone to college and played sports, those were gonna be things that he were gonna do while he was there. So we wanted to make sure that we were carrying his legacy. This kid who had this superhero power, and that superhero power was love. And he just used sport to share it. And that's the goal for the foundation.